Hi, I'm Andrew Namboka. I'm from Checkpoint Software Technologies. I'm here to talk to you about virtual private networks. So virtual private networks um, have had uh, a mixed reception. Um, some people consider SSL VPNs to be virtual private networks um, and all manner of different um, hybrid or proprietary approaches. But truly the, uh, the, the classic virtual private network is um, a virtual implementation of your existing enterprise network. So if you think of uh, technologies such as leased lines, frame relay, X25, if you implement those over an unprotected medium such as the internet and you use uh, encryption and security controls over those connections, that is what a virtual private network is. And the technology of choice in the industry today is IPsec. Virtual private networks um, initially started with only site-to-site -site, um, um, deployments. So organizations would want to replace uh, leased line connections between their premises. Um, instead of having an expensive leased line connection, they wanted to use perhaps um, over an internet connection or um, over an IP backbone, they would use this technology. However, they've expanded significantly since then. And there are generally three scenarios you see virtual private networks today. One is uh, an enterprise intranet, and that's a model for uh, access from distributed company locations, company-owned locations, to, uh, to central resources, your core databases, your core applications. That's the enterprise intranet. Um, an enterprise extranet uh, is a similar deployment, but your connections are to business partners. You don't control both ends there. You might control central resources, um, but um, the requirements for that kind of deployment are subtly different from an enterprise intranet. And then thirdly, on-demand scenarios. So, as we mentioned, traditionally VPNs were site-to-site -site deployments, but a large uh, proportion of the endpoints in a VPN in any enterprise VPN are actually on demand and they are to your laptops, perhaps to a smartphone um, and increasingly um, the profile of those users, uh, the kind of users that are uh, connecting to the enterprise over VPN um, is going beyond let's say corporate executives. Pretty much any employee in the organization that's on the road uses uh, a VPN to connect back. It's, um, you need to look very carefully at your uh, users uh, and your, your customers, if you like. Um, you'll have external customers in terms of partners, uh, and then you'll have your internal customers. Um, and one of the, let's say, sources of inertia initially for VPNs being rolled out was things like application support. Um, let me give you a scenario. When you have uh, protocols such as multicast or uh, multimedia, uh, these protocols are usually tricky to convey over the traditional uh, IPsec VPN, just simply in, in the way the technology works. So having an idea of the kind of applications you need to transport is one critical area. Secondly, thinking carefully about the site-to-site -site VPN or the on-demand VPN that you're going to need to support. In the site-to-site -site scenario, actually everybody depends on you. Everybody depends on the VPN to connect in. So you need a lot of resilience, high availability, those kind of technologies. When it comes to extranet partners, you don't control both ends of the VPN. You can't prescribe or impose on your business partner what uh, technology product vendor they're going to use. So you need interoperability criteria to be met. And then once in your on-demand scenario, you have to do a lot of uh, protections on the endpoint before you trust it to connect to your, uh, your own enterprise. And so all of these technologies, uh, when they're brought to bear in, in, a, in, let's say in a single set of requirements, means that you need to be very specific about what profiles you're going to support, uh, what security measures you're going to put in place, and what resilience measures you're going to put in place. The only way to see this in a, a, a cohesive way is to have a very comprehensive and scalable management approach. All the, other, all the other elements, scale, security, and so forth, don't really matter unless you have comprehensive management. Any discussion uh, that looks at uh, an enterprise VPN strategy um, historically was impacted by the limitations of different vendors' implementations. So interoperability was like a, a real key challenge. Um, stage one, 
Beyond that, you'd be looking at um, what are the, uh, the different vendors' uh, encryption capabilities, how have they implemented. A lot of these initial, let's say, gremlins or teething problems have moved to one side. And in general, you have fairly good interoperability between multiple vendors. Uh, and so the three scenarios that you look at, intranet, extranet, and on-demand, are generally well taken care of there. Where the challenge comes, and really at the heart of most uh, VPN uh, technology selections today uh, are considerations of management. Um, let's look within the organization as itself. Within the organization as itself, you need to look at who are my customers? Um, does every remote location need to speak to another remote location? Or are remote locations typically coming into a central resource, a data center, for application access? Those pull two different topology types. Um, a fully mesh VPN allows everybody to speak to everybody. Each, uh, each site being able to connect to uh, multiple sites. Whereas um, a hub and spoke to topology allows remote locations to come to a central uh, location. In practice, most VPNs are actually a combination of the two. Being able to manage that complexity, because it's beyond just uh, achieving connectivity in the networking sense, there's also security protocols, and they're called profiles that need to be managed. At the heart of those profiles, the strength of your VPN, the security within your VPN, is down to encryption keys and the ability to um, uh, deploy and manage those keys and refresh them regularly as prescribed by your industry, your sector, your nation, um, that is incredibly difficult work. Firstly, it's computationally difficult on the endpoints, but also the management and distribution of those is very difficult. So at the heart of it are who is speaking to whom, being able to support those transactions, um, the applications that they're uh, trying to use. Uh, multicast and multimedia applications are trickier, for example, than just simple uh, file transfer applications. And then finally, the, the ability to, um, to probe and detect what's going on at any time uh, across your VPN. That's both in the deployment, but the ongoing management. Should you have a problem and you need diagnosis, this is all within the management. So at the heart of it is management, but uh, just one layer below is understanding those specific uh, end user or endpoint uh, requirements from an application and, uh, and a conversation perspective. Um, this is it. The ratio, uh, historically, the ratio of nomadic users within an enterprise was actually quite low, maybe sub 5%, because it was very expensive to get those uh, remote users to connect to the enterprise. You'd have modem banks, etc., etc., and it was very expensive. However, now with, with VPNs, you can have a larger proportion of your employees either in front of customers or uh, working with partners, and, and those are value add employees. So, with any enterprise today, um, there's very, very few reasons why not, uh, you know, why you shouldn't have a VPN. There are certain industries, there are certain sectors where, unless very prescriptive measures are taken about endpoint devices, uh, they will not permit connection to the enterprise. And that's why, certainly from, from, from Checkpoint's perspective, we've learned that you need to have very, very rigorous controls on an endpoint before it's permitted to connect uh, to the to enterprise resources. And you know we have uh, technologies and solutions in that area. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Andrew Namboka. I'm from Checkpoint Software Technologies, and I'm the Regional Sales Engineering Manager here in Asia Pacific.